So, have you ever been doing a puzzle, having a great time, you've made it to the very last piece, and then, oh no, you're missing a piece. Well, no worries, because today I'm going to show you how to make your own replacement jigsaw puzzle piece two ways. One way is a bit more crafty, and the other way is a bit more high tech. But before I get into it, today's video is sponsored by ZMAD, the company that makes the Magic Jigsaw Puzzles app. Magic Jigsaw Puzzles is an app that lets you do your puzzles anytime, any place. And since it's all on your phone, you're never gonna lose a puzzle piece. So a feature that they added that I love is that you can export a time-lapse video of you doing your puzzles in the app and then share it on social media. This feature is available to anyone, whether you are a VIP or not. So if you make one, make sure that you tag both me and at Magic Puzzles on Instagram. If you wanna learn more about the Magic Jigsaw Puzzles app, I actually made a video the other week doing a full review of the entire thing in a ton of detail. So I'm gonna link that video right down below. And I'll also link where you can download the app. It's available on the App Store and also on Google Play. All right, so now let's learn how to make a replacement puzzle piece. So, as I said, I'm going to have two different methods for how to do this. And before I start, I just want to clarify that neither of these puzzles are actually missing any pieces. I decided to do this with puzzles where I do have all the pieces just for demonstration's sake so that in the end, we can compare my new puzzle piece with the original puzzle piece. So let's start with the crafty method. And for this one, I'll be using the Ravensburger puzzle, Fantastic Fashionista. So we're going to get started by flipping over a small section of pieces around the missing piece. Add washi tape to the back so that they'll stay together. So now that we have this small section of pieces that we can flip over and move around, put the rest of the puzzle on a piece of foam core and move it off to the side. Next, grab some cardboard. I'm using a cereal box because I figure everyone has one of those lying around. And cut a few squares that are a little bigger than your missing puzzle piece. Stack them up until you're at the same height as your puzzle piece. So for a Ravensburger puzzle, I'm using three layers of cardboard. Now you'll want to glue them together, and I'm using spray glue for this, but you could also use rubber cement or a glue stick. You just wanna be careful with wet glues because the moisture can cause the cardboard to warp. And make sure that the printed side of the cardboard is on the inside, on both the front and the back. So once that's all put together, Place it underneath something heavy to dry. All right, so once it's dry, grab a pencil and a pencil sharpener. Get it as sharp as you can possibly make it. And then place the cardboard underneath the puzzle pieces and carefully trace the missing piece, making sure to get your pencil right into all of the corners of every little nook and cranny. Now it's time to cut it out and to get it as precise as possible, I'll be using these detail scissors from Fiskars, as well as a craft knife and a cutting mat. And of course, I'm going to have links down in the description for all of the supplies that I'm showing. So begin by cutting off all of the excess along the corners, and also by cutting any straight lines. Then use a craft knife to cut out any inside shapes. Make sure that you have a new sharp craft knife blade, and take your time with this. Cutting through this many layers of cardboard is not easy. Of course, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, you could also use those to cut out the exact shapes, but that would be a whole nother video for another day. So today I'm just going back and forth between the craft knife and the scissors until the whole thing is cut out. Next, try to put it in place 
and continue trimming it down until it fits nicely. Once you're happy with how it fits, grab an adhesive label, and you can get these at any office supply store. Cut a piece to fit onto the puzzle piece, and I actually like doing two layers of the label to get a completely opaque white surface. And then, once again, use your scissors and your craft knife to trim it down. Okay, so now that we have a blank puzzle piece that fits in place, this is the fun part drawing the missing picture. Make sure that you have the box top on hand so you can reference what you need to draw and then just go for it. I drew the design lightly in pencil first and then I colored it in with colored pencils. I like using colored pencils because I think it's easier to draw with the piece in place and colored pencils aren't as messy as markers or paints would be, so you're not going to ruin the existing pieces around the edges. But you will want to take it out of the puzzle to finish off the edges and make sure that everything is blended together nicely. So I think that looks pretty good, but we just have one more step, and that is to spray it with a clear sealant to protect our drawing and make the piece more durable. You can get this spray at any craft store and you just spray it on and let it dry. And then for one more optional final step, I also decided to color the back of the piece blue to match the Ravensburger cardboard. Okay, so that is it, we are done. We have made a missing puzzle piece that's not perfect, but it definitely looks better than just having a big old hole right there in your puzzle. If we compare it to the existing puzzle piece that wasn't actually missing, I think I did a pretty good job. So make sure to remove the washi tape from the back of the pieces, and then when we put our new piece into place, honestly, when you have the rest of the puzzle all around it, it really does blend in and look pretty good. But wait, that was only method number one. For my second method, you're going to need a scanner or a camera, as well as Photoshop and a printer. For this one, I'm using the Gibson's Puzzle Mermaid Street Rye, and let's just pretend that this piece is missing with this girl's face on it. This would definitely be harder to draw by hand than the piece that I used for the first one. So once again, grab the surrounding pieces and tape them together just to make it easier to work with. Now find the missing section on the box top, and scanning this would probably be the best way to do it, but my scanner is not working, so I'm going to photograph it with my nice camera. You could use your phone, but the nicer the camera, the better this is gonna come out. So bring that into Photoshop, and then the hardest part is just sizing it to be the exact size that you need. So what I did is I cropped it down to the exact top and bottom of where the puzzle piece will be, and then I measured the height of the puzzle piece, which for mine is 3.25 centimeters. And then I used that measurement to resize it in Photoshop, making sure that the resolution is 300 DPI. Once it was the right size, I expanded the cropping to give myself a little more wiggle room, and then I printed it onto a piece of matte cardstock. So now that it's printed, you'll want to lay the puzzle pieces over the printout, and get it as lined up as you can. And if it's not lining up, you might have to go back and adjust the size and print it out again, but I actually managed to get it right on my first try. So you're gonna use your sharp pencil to trace the outline of the piece, and then you'll want to cut it out. Next, you're going to trace the piece again onto cardboard, tracing it for as many layers as you'll be making, and make sure to flip it over for one of them so that the plain side of the cardboard will be on the outside for the bottom layer. So this time, I'm going to cut out all of the pieces before gluing them together, 
And since this is just one single layer of cardboard, I'm just using my detail scissors. So once they're all cut out, make sure to erase any pencil marks from the cardstock and then glue them together. I'm using a glue stick this time since it's a little less messy than the spray glue, but you can use whatever you have. Just make sure that you place it underneath something heavy while it dries so that the layers are really, really stuck together. So once that's dry, the layers might not be lined up perfectly, so you can give it a little trim. And now it is time for the moment of truth trying it out in the puzzle. And oh my God, that actually looks like really good. But wait, there's one more step. We're going to give it a spray of the sealant to keep it protected. Okay, so once that's dry, we have a replacement puzzle piece. I'm actually so impressed with myself. Like, that looks way better than even I was expecting it to. If we compare it to the original, the new one isn't quite as high quality or as vibrant, but once it's in place, unless you're really looking for it, it doesn't really jump out as a replacement. So this method actually does work really well, especially if the piece is too complicated to draw it yourself. So I would love to know in a comment right down below, have you ever made your own replacement puzzle pieces? Did you do anything differently from what I did here? There's no right or wrong way to do it. So if you have any other tips, I would love to hear them. Also, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but if you have only found me through this puzzle channel, I have actually been making DIY videos on YouTube for years and years. I have my Karen Cavett DIY channel, and then I also make videos for HGTV Handmade. So I'll link both of those channels right down below if you wanna see more craft videos from me. Um, these cardboard letters behind me, those are actually a craft project for HGTV, and I'm really happy with how they came out. I think they're so cute. So once again, I wanna say a huge thank you to Magic Jigsaw Puzzles for sponsoring this video. The link for where to download their app will be down in the description, so you can get your puzzle on anywhere that you are and you never have to worry about missing any puzzle pieces. So your code word for the comments, if you have watched all the way to the end, is going to be DIY. I hope this video was useful to you and I'll see you all in the next one.